Okay, so now we're going to continue with the validation. Uh, it's obviously, you know, fairly boring, but we need to get this done. Um, and it'll also go over, you know, uh, a few more things that we've looked at and hopefully clarify them better. Okay, so now what we need to do is once we've looped through our items, we need to do another check that this array is empty. Uh, the reason being is that if we hit any item that has not been specified or anything, nothing's been typed and it's required, we don't really want to do any more validation uh, until um, all of the field, form fields are filled in. So here I want to say if empty errors is equal to true, then what do we want to do? Well, the we don't have much data really to validate we've just got the email address here the first name really can be any amount of characters we haven't specified whether it has to be greater than or less than a certain amount of characters uh, obviously if you had done that in your registration process it'd be a good idea to include that that here as well that check here but I'm just going to be focusing on validating the email address and then we'll go on to the actual important part which is actually updating the user's details so I'm going to do a couple of, uh, or I'm going to do an if, else if uh, statement here. Uh, and the first is uh, validating the email address, much like we did down here uh, using filter var, and then we checked if the email exists or not. So I'm going to say filter var email, and how we want to validate this. So I'm going to validate, um, uh, sorry, filter validate email. Now if this is equal to false, that means that we have an invalid email address, so we can go ahead uh, and basically just copy this uh, here, paste that in there. Um, now if the email address is valid, we go onto this part of this, this block of the if statement, um, and then we need to perform another check. Now this is where the logic starts to get slightly different. Now we need to check if this email address already exists because if the email address already exists we can't have another user use it. Say I registered and then you registered and then you tried to change your email address to my email address that's not something's wrong there you know we, we don't want to allow that. But we also need to include an additional uh, part to this condition and that is um, as long as the user the, the current email is different from the from the email stored. The reason being is that if I, let's just talk about me uh, now, if I went and registered with an email address alex at phpacademy.org or billy at phpacademy.org and then I wanted to update my details and I left my uh, email as it was, that, that email technically exists. So we only want to perform this check when the email address has been changed within the field. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, I'll write it out and then it will. So uh, we need to use the email exists function that we created. If you need to remind yourself, go back and look at that. And we're passing through the posted email address. So if email, uh, if email exists is equal to true, then we need to error, but only when as well, so and, uh, the user data email, which is our current email address. Remember, we're using user data down here doesn't equal the posted email. So we'll take a look at how this works in a moment when we test out all these uh, these things. Uh, but essentially we need the same error if that email address already exists. And we're done. So let's go ahead and just print our errors. This will just give us a, a visual representation of our array. I'm going to hit settings and I'm going to click update. Okay, so we've got uh, an undefined variable here. We can go ahead and fix that. So undefined variable email in on line 16. Um, line 16 is here. Okay, so yeah, well, I've tried to pass through a variable email that unfortunately doesn't exist. It is dollar underscore post email that we're validating. So that was a problem there. Okay, so let's go back onto settings. Fine. Uh, let's click update and the array is empty which is good news that's what we want to see um, if I then go ahead and say don't include my last name that's fine no no problems there's uh, you know nothing's happened really I know this has popped back but that's only because we're not actually doing anything once we've clicked update so if I was to remove my first name or that's not my first name but update it now says fields marked with an asterisk are required, so we're getting this uh, this data, uh, these errors start to show through. 
Um, now you notice when I click update, this isn't returning an error saying, oh, that email address isn't, it, you know, it's already in use. If we didn't have this part, let's just cut that out for a moment, uh, and we clicked update, uh, it says, sorry, the email billy at phpacademy.org is already in use because, you know, you're thinking, hold on, this is my email address. Uh, what's the problem? So that's why we included this part in here. Okay, so now if I go and try and change this, um, then, uh, you know, it will be validated. So for this, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new user account in here. So I'm going to really quickly do this. So my username, Alex, uh, password, password, Alex. Garrett, this email, uh, don't have to worry about that and I'm going to activate my account, make sure that is an MD5 hash, click go. So I've manually registered this account called Alex with the email alex at phpacademy.org. Now if I was to change this to say fred at phpacademy.org and I click update, there's no errors. We can change. I can change my email address to fred at phpacademy.org. If I change it to alex at phpacademy.org, however, uh, the email alex at phpacademy.org is already in use. So we've, you know, we've gone through choply and checked these this uh, form field validation. So now to actually output the errors, we'll quickly go ahead and do that. We want to do this under the header. So remember, we're doing a logic at the top, and then we're outputting anything down here. Uh, so what, what do we want to say? Well, we want to say if empty dollar underscore post is equal to uh, false and empty errors is um, equal to true. Then what do we want to do? Well, this means that we've posted data and there's no errors. So we want to update user details. Otherwise, what do we want to do? Well, we'll say else if empty errors is equal to false. And what does this mean? Well, this means we have errors. So we go ahead and we echo using our output errors function that we created earlier on. So again, if you're unfamiliar, go, ahead, go back and check that. And we echo the errors. Okay, so at the moment, we're not doing anything uh, if we are successful. But when we click update, um, when we sorry, when we click update and we have something wrong, we get this error out here. We get some error um, business going on. Okay, so um, now that we've done that, that's perfect. Uh, we need to go ahead and actually uh, look at updating our user uh, now. So we're going to look at that in the next part. We're going to be constructing an array of data that we need to pass through to our function to update exactly like we did in register. Uh, we're going to update the details, redirect the user and show a success message.